Hey, I'm John Bauer. You are listening to the Dynasty Hot Seat. Let's go. Yes, hello again and welcome back to the Dynasty Hot Seat. And today we are super, super lucky to have with us. It's the host of the Dynasty Theory podcast. It is John Bauer. And I don't know if you knew it, but there is one rule about Bauer Club and it is talk about Bauer Club as much as physically possible. So make sure that you are sharing this video, make sure you're liking it and giving John a follow at the, am I correct saying it, at the Bauer Club? John, am I right with that? Spot on, Connor, spot on. So make sure you're giving him a like and a follow there. Information is going to be just below here. And yeah, he's got lots of great stuff. And today we're lucky enough to bring him on to the only Dynasty show that is a certified inferno. It's the Dynasty hot seat. So John, welcome. Thanks for coming on. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for having me, Connor. I always like doing shows with international folks because I like to record early in the morning as, as yes. much as possible. I wake up, I'm ready to go. It sets the tone for the day because when I do Dynasty Theory which, with Mitch and Dan, we're going at 10 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday nights. Yeah. And you know, you're sitting there, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. But here, like I'm ready to go. I was a little hesitant when you mentioned uh, Kev's name. I said, oh, I don't know if I want to, oh, no. Put Kev on blast right away. I like it. <laughs> you have to. You have to. No, he's, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm excited to talk about Dynasty. Amazing. So, Joe, we're just going get, to get stuck right in it. Segment one. Uh, segment one's called The Art of War. It's your hints and tips for Dynasty. Now, a lot of people have been quoting that book, so I don't know if you'll be doing the same. But so far, I think three out of four guests have quoted The Art of War by Shang Shu. So I've just decided to name that segment, The Art of War. So it's just your hints and tips for Dynasty. Man, I'm not going to be as philosophical then as your other guests <laughs> because I will not be <laughs> quoting The Art of War. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of people in our, our Discord and our Patreon, they would love that because we have a little section for, uh, it's called the Book Bookworms. It's a channel that they discuss books. And I'm like, I'm just oh, here cool. for fantasy. I don't, I don't want to read a book. Come on. <laughs> but, but there's so many things like, you see people on Twitter and even on dynasty theory, we talk about it, you know, more in depth analysis and, you know, people can get very overwhelmed, especially when taking that leap from redraft or best ball to dynasty, but you don't have to be a genius. I, I'm, I'm living proof of that. You don't, you don't have to be a genius <laughs> to play dynasty Two of the things. So I, I have three points I want to touch on two okay. of them are strictly really like paying attention the first one, it's as simple as knowing your league settings. I cannot mm. tell you how many leagues I, I'm in and how many people I've interacted with where you discuss a trade with somebody and they're like, oh, I didn't know this was two PPR for tight ends. Or I didn't know it was six points for a passing touchdown as opposed to four. Uh, or, you know, the, the big thing for me, know how your rookie draft order is decided. Because so mm. many times people will trade a pick not realizing that it's based on potential points as opposed to standings, or it's based mm. on this as opposed to that, or you have a lottery, which I think is a terrible way to do it. But, yeah. you know, knowing your league settings, it's as simple as that to not necessarily give you an edge, but just so you don't fall behind. And I think that that's, that's so critical. The next one I have be engaged. If mm. you are taking part in dynasty fantasy football, you most likely are a fantasy football degenerate, most likely. Yeah. So I'm not saying you need to necessarily be trading 24 seven. That's not it. We're not talking about just churning your roster over and over and over, but be engaged. If there's a league chat, even if you're creeping behind the scenes, pay attention. Hey, Connor just jump, jumped in there and said, you know, Matthew Stafford is on the block. Okay. Well, I'm paying attention to that. I see that you're looking to move him. I'm jumping in because that's somebody personally, I know I'm higher on than the general market. So because mm. I'm paying attention, that is one way to set yourself apart. And there are so many people that just exist in dynasty leagues. 
and I'm sure you've seen it. Yes. They, they, they join the startup draft or the, the, uh, the auction draft to kick it off. We don't hear from them until next year's rookie draft. And then you yeah. can see those are the teams that gradually as the, uh, the years accumulate here and the, the, your dynasty league progresses, those are the teams that fall behind. So just be engaged. I, I, I can't stress that enough. And then the last one, being able to adapt. And this mm. goes with ADP, your player evaluations, the way you approach dynasty in general. There are so many people there, you know, this is my strategy. I'm sticking with it. It works sometimes. It doesn't work sometimes, but I'm never going to adapt. This is my strategy. This is the way I attack the quarterback position in super flex. Even if it's tight end premium, I don't, I don't look to bolster my tight end room and you know, they're stuck in their ways and you mm. see it all the time, you know, Hey, uh, Connor, you know, I know you sent me an offer for Joe Mixon, but I took him in the second round of our startup and you're offering me this. Well, things have changed since then. Things mm -hmm. have changed since five minutes ago, to be honest with you, because of how quickly news comes out, especially with rumors during this time of the off season, yeah, it's crazy. perceived value is constantly changing. So I think adaptability is so like, I keep saying critical, but it really is. So not necessarily the, the art of buying low or selling high or, or getting youthful assets with insulated value or getting veterans to help you win. Now that is a 10 hour long discussion that you could have separately, Yeah, but just high level tips that whether you're a grizzled veteran of the dynasty game or you're jumping in your first league, those are overarching, I think strategy, not necessarily even strategies, just things to pay attention to where I don't think there's much gray area there. Because again, when you start to get into, well, this is the way I attack this position or that, or that, or that, there's so many nuances and there is a certain gray area associated with that. But for this, it's overarching and it can be used from league to league. And I talk about being adaptable. I, I, and I, I, the example I use with Joe Mixon there, I think a lot of people give into that sunk cost fallacy and you know what you paid last year or in your rookie draft, it yeah. doesn't matter. You know, uh, yeah. Trey Sermon's a perfect example. I think overall oh, the market yeah. reflected that. But if you took him at 201 in your rookie draft and now you're trying to move him for an early second in 2022, no, 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 Connor, things have changed. That's yeah. not going to fly. So I think yeah. being able to adapt, you know, we're talking about the sunk cost fallacy to a little bit of a deeper dive, but those are all things that you should be paying attention to and keeping in the back of your mind when you're playing dynasty fantasy football, God, I could, yeah. Connor, I, I could talk your ear off all freaking day. Let's do, I, I can keep going. We keep recording. It's all right. <laughs> I, I got, I got nowhere to be. <laughs> no, I absolutely love those things and tips. Like the, the be, the be engaged one is, you know, it seems so obvious and, you know, I imagine, you know, anybody listening to a dynasty podcast is going to be one of those people, but yeah, I like that. You know, you're, you're saying there are just people there that aren't engaged. Like I think a perfect example of that was last season, whenever AJ Brown started to take a dip, you just had to start rubbing your hands together and going, right, let me just bid for AJ Brown in every single league. I don't have him because if I'm engaged with that and I get in ahead of everybody else, then you can get them for those cheap prices. And you can see, a lot of the time, like I, I got, it was a very unrealistic trade, but it worked. I got AJ Brown for Julio Jones in a first in one league, which is, you know, crazy. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, but below, the first comment below was some guy saying, oh, I would have given you more than that. I was like, well, you didn't. Like, you missed a boat. Like, that, that is the thing. And it drives me crazy. It's, mm. you know, the people that aren't always engaged or the people that don't make trades, they're always the first to respond yeah. in, in the chat. Oh man, that was so lopsided. I would have given more than that. I saw the offer you sent me, Connor. You weren't giving me more than that. What are you talking yeah. about? So that, yeah. that I love that. It ties in exactly to being engaged. If you were around, mm -hmm. and even if you're just paying attention to what's going on, I do the same thing. You mentioned AJ Brown, but I do the same thing with injured players. You know, yes. my roster ship of J.K. Dobbins, Travis Etienne, even Cam Akers. I know there was a concern with yeah. the Achilles, but that stock has started to rise, at least until mm -hmm. recently, because of how he played in the playoffs. Uh, even Derrick Henry, he mm -hmm. was cheap to begin with because of his age, but now you have the injury to basically end his season. Those are all things to help you stay ahead of the curve. And I guess more of a player 
specific strategy as opposed to the other ones, but going out and getting those injured players that still are going to return value as soon as they become active again. So yeah, I, I like exactly. the, the comparison with AJ Brown there. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Um, so those are three, you know, incredibly good tips for, for all the people to use and all the listeners to use. And now we're going to see if you can transfer any of those tips and use them in a mock draft as we're about to put John into the hot seat. How are you feeling, John? I'm a little sweaty. It is getting hot. A little it sweaty. Right. Well, let's see what happens if you put him in the hot seat right now. Okay, so here we are. We've got the mock draft tool ready to go. And now, John, you're firmly sitting in the hot seat as the embers start to sizzle. How, how are you feeling about this? Good. Getting antsy. The coffee's Ooh. kicking in. I'm ready to All rock right. and roll, baby. All I'm right, let, let's, roll. let's get started then. As we first ask you, this is 12 teams, and you are going to get to choose at the start. If you had your perfect world, what position would you begin drafting with? Now, because this is a 12-team super flex league where the positional runs don't kill you as much mm -hmm. as they would in a 14 or 16-team super flex league, I want to be in the, the first part of the draft. Now, a couple years ago, when you were able to get a King's Ransom for that 101, right? You were able to get yeah. like, a startup second, a startup third, a future first. Well, people have started to wise up a little bit. So most yeah. likely that's not going to happen. Now, because yeah. the way I have my tiers broken out, I have three players in that top tier. Because mm. of that, I'm going to take 103 for this draft. Yeah. I like it. So you're getting someone from your top tier no matter what, and the snake's coming around to you a bit earlier. Really, really like it. So let's lock in position three, and let's get going as we imagine the first two players off the board will be yes as, yep. as i'm sure you thought patrick holmes and josh allen who i assume were the other two players in your top three they and, were yeah. and this other one i don't think it's controversial it shouldn't be if it is but for me it's got to be the guy at the top of the list on the screen it's got to be Justin Herbert. We've seen the upside. Mm -hmm. He is a, a mobile quarterback. He's not going to be, as, as a lot of people refer to it, like a Konami cheat code quarterback. But yeah. the volume is there. His, his, even the running backs in that offense, their value is bolstered by their production in the passing game. So, of mm -hmm. course, that's going to bump up Justin Herbert. And, you know, you talk about all these quarterbacks, and you talk about uh, uh, Josh Allen, the way that offense was running with Brian Dable at offensive coordinator, Patrick Mahomes with Andy Reid. Well, Justin mm. Herbert was doing it in year one, despite Anthony Lynn. Like yeah. it wasn't because of Anthony Lynn. It was in spite of him. And yes. in year two with Brian Staley at head coach and, and the changes in the scheme, he was still extremely productive. And I know a lot of people were looking at him saying, Hey, you know, we typically see those rookie quarterbacks that really come in strong come crashing down and the example everybody points to is baker mayfield well we saw it two years in a row now from justin herbert he is not baker mayfield thank god so for me no. 103 give me justin herbert we have that insulated value in the quarterback position quarterback one on my team locked up i don't have to worry about starting players like matt ryan and ryan and Tannehill on a mm. weekly basis so give me justin herbert 103 yeah i would have done the exact same and i think you know I don't think it's controversial at all that Justin Herbert's up in your top tier. If people don't have him there already, this time next year, I think everyone's going to have Justin Herbert up in their, their top tier. So I think it's a great pick at 103 as the snake starts to get moving again. You see people like Jonathan Taylor coming off the board. Maybe the only running back that you would consider taking over some of these elite quarterbacks. And as you'd imagine, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and the elite wide receivers starting to run off the board as we're about to come in at pick 210 and let's see who we got as i'll pause the clock for you so we can take as much time as we need now uh john on this as well i'm able to filter two position as well if you just want to see what quarterbacks or just want to see what running backs are etc there are so i'll be able to do that for you if you want or you can just kind of see your your list of adp ranked players with austin eckler trey lance and cooper cup sitting at the top for you 
Can I see the board of the, the players that were picked? Of course, yes. To go back yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll like just it. scroll up. I just, I just want to mark it here on my tier list. You know, even though it's a mock, you got to take it seriously. Mm. I'm not here to mess yeah. around. All right, no. so Mahomes, Allen, Herbert, JT, Burrow, Kyler, Lamar, Najee Harris. What do you think about Joe Burrow going ahead of Kyler and Lamar? You agree with oh, that? Man. It's tricky, right? So we 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 dug into this on Tuesday's episode of Dynasty Theory, mm. and Mitch and Dan were on one side, as they typically they gang up on me all the time. It happens on a weekly <laughs> basis. They know how to push my buttons, get me fired up. I'm high strung to begin with, as you can tell. But <laughs> I would I have no issue with somebody going Joe Burrow over Kyler Murray. Mm-hmm. I I have them in the same tier. I have Dak, yeah. Lamar, Kyler, Burrow. Those are my, my four quarterbacks in that second tier. So yes. I personally have no issue with it. But Kyler, Lamar, I know things are going on with social media for Kyler. Lamar, it's that recency bias where he missed a portion mm. of the end of the season. Yeah. And back to Arizona, you know, the, the way they fell apart down the stretch again, people yeah. are a little down on Kyler. But those are two guys I, I don't think you can go wrong. And it goes back to the rushing upside of both. So I'm okay with both of them. Uh, Jamar Chase, he's gone. Justin Jefferson, he's gone. McCaffrey. All right, uh, all right let's go back to the uh, the players let's available. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to eat up all the time marking guys off here. No, you're all good. So we're at what? 210. 210, yeah. All right, so... I have a tier here of yeah. 201 to 210. And that mm-hmm. tier for me is Matthew Stafford, Justin Fields, Trey Lance, Russell Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, Harris, Swift, mm-hmm. McCaffrey, Lamb, and A.J. Brown. And it looks like Lamb and A.J. Brown are off the board. Yeah, I think so. McCaffrey's off the board. Swift is yes. off the board. Harris. So looking at these quarterbacks. I just threw a tweet out earlier this morning about this, but the hype that is building, like, I would love to trade back here. Can I trade back? (laughs) No, unfortunately, no. I I think I might do the same as well if I was new. In fact, I did. I've just done a mock draft and traded back, I think, in this almost exact same spot and not a mock draft, a new startup. Yeah. So looking at this, based on the hype building, especially if you're involved on Twitter and you really follow along with the hype building and everything going on. As soon as Jimmy Garoppolo officially leaves San Francisco, that value for Trey Lance is going to spike. So the move I typically would want to make here is move back a little bit because I would want to take Matthew Stafford. I -hmm. have him in that tier, Mm -hmm. but based on perceived value and what I think I could get eventually, I would get a little uh, uh, tricky here, I guess. And, and be a little, get a little cute, if you will, and go Trey Lance. Trey and, Lance, yeah. But again, ideally, I then can pivot off of Trey Lance for Matthew Stafford plus. That mm-hmm. that would be my play. But yeah, I'll go Trey Lance here with no Trey option Lance. to trade back. He's yeah, Trey Lance. I've I've been too afraid to draft Trey Lance so far. I haven't got. I think. I'm oh no! No! Sure. No! Wait! 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 Don't! Don't click it! Oh, don't click it! Don't. Click I'm not it. done anything. Who have you seen? Uh, wait, hold on. So my, my tiers right here, they are based on tight end premium and we're not doing tight end premium here. No, but you know what? Still, still at two ten, I'll take Kyle Pitts. Give me Kyle Pitts. Actually. Ooh. I didn't see him creep in there. Yeah. He's sneaky. The only tight end in there, Kyle Pitts. Yeah. I, I actually, I didn't see him creeping around there. And then I'm guessing Mark Andrews is a little bit lower. Mark Andrews will be quite a word on the board. Uh, George Kittle is actually in Kelsey slightly ahead of Mark okay. Andrews uh, the, okay. um, on this tool. But yeah, we're, I'm sure you'd be more than happy to take Kyle Pitts. Final lock answer. it in. Lock Final it answer. In. Lock, lock it in, oh. Regis. Lock it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's actually quite nice is we're really quickly back on the board. And oh, I thought we now might it, have been able it, to get Trey Lance. And now, I t- and, and now I smash Matthew Stafford. Absolutely. Because, yeah, Matthew Stafford is still there. Because at this point in the draft, we're at 303. You have a general idea of how active your league is going to be by this point. 
because you had pre-draft to maneuver mm-hmm. around a little bit. Typically you have like 24 hours or whatever the commissioner sets to have access to your picks before the draft starts. So if you see that there's not a lot of trades being made up to this point, then the possibility of you to move back or to move up with your fourth round pick, it's slim to none. So with that said, he's not going to make it back to me. I want to lock in two of my top 10 quarterbacks. Give me Matthew Stafford over Justin Fields here, even Mm. though the market would probably, uh, the market would certainly dictate I go Justin Fields, but no, give me Matthew Stafford. That is a final answer. Matthew Stafford, Super Bowl winner. Matthew Stafford is in the team. What an amazing start. You've got Justin Herbert, you got Matthew Stafford, and you got Kyle Pitts in the first three runs. I, can we turn this into an actual startup here? Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, I think most people have said they're like, oh, this is it's like it never goes this well. <laughs> but yeah, as we see, you can see some of the players coming off now. As you'd imagine, people like J.K. Dobbins and Chris Godwin, Derek Henry, Travis Kelsey, and Terry McLaurin coming off the board as we enter late fourth round. And we see people at the top like Deontay Johnson, DJ Moore, Cam Akers, and Tua sitting up at the top. Again, remember, I can filter by position if you're thinking, oh, I need to grab a certain player or position here. You know what, Connor? It's February 19th. I have plenty of time to fill my roster out. We have (laughs) six and a half months. I'm not worried about a certain position. The name of the game today is value. Absolutely. And, And sometimes it comes back to bite you in the butt because like I said, I was talking about getting Trey Lance and then hoping Mm. the value spikes a little bit more and pivot off them. So it gets you sometimes if it doesn't work out, but before I made my pick, I saw JK Dobbins go what four Oh five, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He is probably the running back last year. I was really pushing for Austin Eckler. And that was the guy that I was really talking about. Uh, You know, he did, you know, we we talked about the hot seat heated Twitter debates and <laughs> times I, I just had to put my phone down and walk away. But this year, that guy for me is JK Dobbins in that mm-hmm. Baltimore offense. So I know I'm not going to get him here, but somebody I've been eyeing up in a lot of my existing leagues, uh, looking at the board. Now, the fact that Mark Andrews is mm-hmm. available still, I'm upset. I took Kyle Pitts because I have them in the same tier, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. So so hindsight's always 2020. Looking at the board, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson, Mac Jones, Ryan. Dunn. All right. So I can tell you, I'm not taking Tannehill here. Mm-hmm. I'm not taking Tua here. What is this? 410? This is 410. And you, like I say, you've taken your quarterbacks early. So now you've got the luxury of, you know, taking these higher end skill positions outside of quarterback and, you know that you're, you're sort of set a quarterback race. Right? So you can kind of come in a bit later and take your third if you want. Right. It, it does give you that flexibility and the, the option to, I don't want to say fade the position from here on out, but how often do you see people in a startup, they put themselves in a situation where they have to reach on a, you know, a Baker Mayfield or a Derek mm. Carr maybe because, oh, I got to get my quarterback now. I want those guys in the top 10 because they have the insulated value. They have mm-hmm. the high-end production. And especially if you're in a league that's plus six for t- uh, passing touchdowns and minus four for interceptions, mm-hmm. that scoring gets a little wonky sometimes. And I don't want to be stuck with that. So I'm glad I took my quarterbacks early. Yeah. Looking at, oh gosh. All right. Let's see. We got someone there kind of like a J.K. Dobbins light talking about value coming off an injury. Travis Etienne down near the bottom there. Very interesting prospect this year, I, I think. I know. And he is somebody I think I can. So I'm going to 410. I, I think I can get him at 503. I can get him at 503. Yeah, we're a quick turnaround. Yeah. So that's yeah worth keeping in mind as well. Definitely. Yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to go through my, my tears here. Uh, uh, who's down? Waller, Hopkins, no. Can't make. Let's scroll down a wee bit. You got Calvin Ridley, Deshaun Watson. So uh, question yeah, marks uh, there, uh, obviously. I just talked about, it and you just said, "Hey, JB, you took two quarterbacks already. You can you can kind of go other directions. The upside is too high. Yeah, at four ten to pass on Deshaun Watson, and I." You know, off the field issues aside from a value and dynasty perspective, as soon as he 
is active, he's a top five or six dynasty quarterback. So give me Completely Deshaun Watson agree. here for the upside. Completely agree. I just took him in that the startup I was talking about. I took him in the third round. And I thought, you know, his ADP was way, way, way down. But I was like, I am right, not right. letting him go in the third. So to get him here in the fourth, you know, is is brilliant. So yeah, Deshaun Watson. And again, that is going to be someone now, that you can flip now, and trade away. Right, absolutely. Now the concern is that a deal is not completed. He doesn't move on from the Texans. He sits out another year, you know, so we lose a, a year of value. And if that mm-hmm. were the case, you know, I lose the value game here, but in the fourth round, I'm okay taking that risk because yep. we're talking about potentially first round startup value. If the off the field concerns and then sitting out with the Texans wasn't taking place. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, two years ago, I took to Sean Watson at one five, I think. In, yeah. In, or yep. one, yeah, that's the kind of player he is. Um, so yeah, if he gets back even close to that, you're 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 hitting a home run in the fourth round, the late fourth round as well. Um, as now we're on the clock in the early fifth, and we can see we talked about Travis Etienne earlier. He's still there, along with Mark Andrews, who's also still there. I know. This <laughs> kills me. It, and I love Kyle Pitts. But it's, you know, even if it were two PPR for tight ends, I have Mark Andrews in that tier with him mm-hmm. because of the way that offense funnels through him. I, oh, man, I'm kicking myself now. Can I get a restart now? <laughs> All right. All right. Looking at it. Mark Andrews, Tannehill, Montgomery, Deontay Johnson. Let's see. where Where's Deontay here? All right. Deontay. Uh, at this point, I think it is. You know, ideally, I would get him around later, but give me Travis Etienne here. Like I, I mentioned last round when you brought him up, I yeah. get him at 503. So let's let's pull the trigger there and take him. Travis Etienne, yeah, absolutely love it. Someone I've been really targeting a lot, along with Jack Ed Dobbins, as you talked about. Just, I think the value seems to be there for him. He's going to play with, it was quite overlooked, he's playing with Trevor Lawrence, who, you know, he he played with in college. So he's all he doesn't have to worry about getting that, natural relationship up and going with his quarterback he's got that already and you know if you know the new coach there has got any brains about him he'll he'll take advantage of that right way and hopefully we'll see a better trevor lawrence next year too so here we are now at the end of the sixth and we've got clyde edwards alaire at the end of the sixth round what a fall from grace he has taken in the last even year And it would still be too early for me to take him here. Mm -hmm. It would still be too early. Looking at... uh, See, what's tricky here, and this is something to keep in mind, too, for the listeners, there are no rookies or rookie picks included in this draft. So the way this board is falling, I'm sitting here at 610, right? 610, I believe. Yes, 610, yeah. Typically, these players are going to be available probably mid seventh, uh, late seventh, because those rookie picks start to push them down a little bit. Yeah. Um, so just something to keep in mind if they're included when you're looking at the ADP mm-hmm. and you're thinking, ah, this seemed like a round off. Well, it very well could be. Yeah. Looking at it at 610, give me. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> It's always throwing me off with these tie ends because I take part in very few leagues that don't have a premium. Mm-hmm. So, so it's throwing me off a little bit, but Judy Bateman, Cooper Sanders. Give me. Uh, if, <laughs> if Tom Brady were going back to, to Tampa, Mike Evans yeah. would be a lock for me here. I had this exact same scenario about two hours ago whenever we were drafting a league and mike evans was staring me in the face and i could not push the button because i don't know who's going to be throwing to him hawkinson again i I have kyle pitts i don't want to double tap tight end this early Mm. carson wentz it reports that he's going to be out of indianapolis where's he going to be judy could see that value spike if they land aaron Rodgers or another high quarterback yeah uh bateman uh, you know what I talked about him as a pivot opportunity over the last few weeks and the, the disrespect in general, and it's year after year, but 
I'm going to go Amari Cooper here. Amari, yeah, you were right. He's constantly, you know, underdrafted. I think Amari Cooper for someone who's who's so talented and so so good, and I think he might be on a contract year this year, which often means big things come, you know, for players who are looking to get a big payday. So Amari Cooper, I think, is great value here if you're happy to lock him in. Now, to be clear, I have him in the same tier as Mike Evans um, yes. and a, a few other receivers that I think already went off the board, but I, you know, Mike Evans with uncertainty at quarterback, I would be shocked though, honestly, if they didn't bring in a quarterback with the talent on that roster, but then you look at the cap situation, mm-hmm. there's always ways to maneuver around that, but yeah, yeah. you can tell I'm trying to talk myself into Mike Evans right now. <laughs> Uh, but give me give me Amari Cooper. Lock it in, lock it in. Let's lock in Amari Cooper. In he goes. Can't be too upset about getting a player with that kind of quality. And we're we're coming around quickly again. Now, what do you do here if Mike Evans is still? Oh, he's not, he's just ah, gone. He so that that, that gets rid of a headache for you, I suppose. So now you got people like Carson Wentz, Jerry Judy. We talked about if Aaron Rodgers is throwing him the ball next year, I mean Jerry Judy's stock is going to explode. And then you got people like Rashad Bateman and you know, some some straggling quarterbacks with Carson Wentz and, and Baker Mayfield who aren't so much in the in the limelight at the minute. Carson, I, you know what Carson Wentz? I think Carson Wentz has been treated a little bit unfair. I don't think he was as bad as as people made out. I've I've got a bit of a soft spot for him. I think the issue is it's the way he ended the season. Yeah, that's what's yeah. in people's mind, and we always talk about recency bias. If he would have had like that game they ended up losing to Baltimore in the middle of the season, but he had a fantastic game. Yeah. If he would have had that towards the end of the season. And then you saw the video of Jim Ursay talking about, you know, we got to make a change and all this stuff. It, it, it just, I think Carson Wentz is a fine value here, mm-hmm. but with the uncertainty, I don't want to lock that in, but if you're into hoarding quarterbacks and I've been known to do that time to time, in a super flex or two quarterback league. I don't yeah. hate it, but yeah. let's see here. So Carson Wentz. I, what are we on seven? We are on seven, three at the moment. Seven, I can show three. you as well. I can show you that this is kind of the players that you have got already. You got Justin Herbert, Cal Pitts, Matthew Stafford, Sean Watson, Travis Etienne and Amari Cooper. That is pretty impressive. I want to take a picture of that. That was, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell the grandkids, hey, one time back in 2022 <laughs> from Dynasty Hot Seat, granddad did a mock draft. The man, was it beautiful? <laughs> give me, give me, give me Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. So now you have got Murray Cooper joined by Brandon Ayuk who came on strong you know toward, after a pretty shaky start last season he's kind of shown now that he is still you know that guy we thought he was at the at the start of his rookie season so I like the pick there Brandon Ayuk and hope you're just hoping that him and him and Trey Lance get that connection right away absolutely and one thing I want to say I I, I you know no disrespect to the dynasty nerds told here but James Robinson just went in the seventh round. Which is not. Yeah. I think the, right. the app updates, the more it's used, the more, the more the people aren't taking James Robinson, he'll just so slowly fall down. Cause I think even the last time we recorded, Tom Brady was still in this round, but now he's, you know, right. he's way down. So I think it takes a bit of time to, to update, but yeah, you gotta be pleased that someone else is taking James Robinson here. It leaves more. Oh, hundred percent. <laughs> But yeah, always take I, I always take mock ADP with a little grain of salt. Um, you know, especially people that that use it as their guide. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I can get this player here. I can get him in this range. I can let this guy fall a little bit. So just you know, pay attention to that. All especially, right, especially especially quarterbacks as well. They'll just start flying off the board when you least expect it. I find. Oh my god! Look, this is an easy. This is the easiest pick I've had today. I'm going to smash Kirk Cousins here. Yeah, Kirk Cousins easily, I think, and maybe maybe Derek Carr, but he's the, the highest kind of value that you're going to get there. Um, now, now because I'm 
trying to run through quickly, not, not marking off my tears here. I have Kirk Cousins. I would feel comfortable taking him early to mid fifth in a 12 team. Oh, super flex very league. nice. So yeah, you're absolutely so the, loving it here in the eighth. The, the fact that I was able to get him here, I'm ecstatic. Amazing. Let's, let's get Kirk Cousins locked in. And now, you know, we took that risk earlier with Deshaun Watson. That risk is now so much smaller because you have, you know, Mr. Reliable himself, Kirk Cousins, to use should Deshaun Watson not get back into the league this year. Right. All right. Darnold, Connor Robinson. Alan Robinson, a really interesting one. A couple of interesting, you know, free agents who, you know, it's like, oh, do you risk it? And then all of a sudden Alan Robinson ends up on the Chiefs and you're just, you know, bathing in dollars. Like you're just swimming around in, in the value that he's got. Or he could end up in the Browns and you're, you know, crying in a corner. It's the same way with Juju. Somebody that yeah. I've been looking to acquire and get him in package deals if possible. Mm -hmm. and the moment, and we always do this as a dynasty community because we always want the best possible scenario. And we do it with draft picks as well. Mm -hmm. But, oh, the Chiefs are going to draft a wide receiver. They're going to get a free agent wide receiver. The Packers are going to do it. The Dolphins are going to take a running back. The Falcons are going to mm -hmm. take a running back. But, you know, it doesn't always shake out that way. But, yeah, if you get Allen Robinson at this point in a draft, if you get Juju Smith-Schuster at this point in the draft, even I'm looking at the quarterbacks, Jameis Winston, Jimmy Garoppolo, and they land in one of those sweet spots, mm -hmm. you know, via trade or free agency, you're very excited. But right now, I think I have to go with What pick is this again? This is, we're sitting early in the ninth round. And again, I can scroll down a little bit as well. You know, as you see, people like uh, Dal Mooney, uh, James Connor still there, um, Amon Rossi and Brown still there as well, along with you know your people that you'd expect to see a bit further down at this stage of the career, like Tyler Boyd and, and Julio Jones. Right. I'm going to... I'm going to take Brandon Cooks. Another mm -hmm. one, you know, I, I think the wide receiver core I've assembled, especially with Amari Cooper and Brandon Cooks, it is the underrated team. And I'm going to stick yeah. with that theme here at wide receiver. If you're looking to fade the position, which I kind of did in this draft with the depth at wide receiver, mm -hmm. you could do a lot worse than Brandon Cooks in the ninth round whenever the rookies and rookie draft picks aren't included. So lock yeah. in Brandon Cooks for me. Yeah, Brandon Cooks, you know, yeah, you're absolutely right. Just just like Amari Cooper, just sort of constantly kind of faded a little bit. Maybe not even on purpose, but it, it's not a flashy name. It doesn't stand out uh, for whatever reason. But yeah, you got to be happy with Brandon Cooks, someone you can just put in your team and, and be pleased about it. Getting him in the ninth round is, we see a couple of tight ends come off the board there. And people like Jimmy G coming off now as well. Great value there at the start of the 10th round as we sneak around again to us at pick 10 10, Cordell Patterson, Melvin Gordon, and James. Connor coming off the board just before us. So here we are. We got a whole lot of wide receivers coming off the board are available on the board here, along with you know Daniel Jones and Taylor Heineke as well. Now I'm gonna go with a player who last preseason I, I talked about him on Dynasty Theory, I talked about him on our Discord, I talked about him on guest spots. Pre-NFL draft, I was super psyched about this guy. And then post-NFL draft, I still accumulated a good amount of shares. But especially the way he ended the season, and I'm talking about Amon Ross St. Brown, mm -hmm. I was advocating for if you can cash out for even a 2023 20, first, do it. If you can get 108, 109 this year, do it. But at this point, I have him in this 811 and 909 tier. Mm -hmm. I'm more than happy to take him here based on the players that have already gone. Give me Amon Ross St. Brown. We don't need him to put up 25, 30 points a game for him to pay off at this price tag. So give me St. Brown. Yeah, I would have done the exact same thing here. He stands out like a sore thumb in that in that list of players. I'm going St. Brown, a great, great pick coming into the end of the 10th round, which is, yeah, what, what great value. I don't, don't think you'll see him there in too many startups this year. As no. we're right back, right back at it, at pick 11, round 11, pick number three. As we see, you know, you got people 
one of the most interesting players, especially at this stage of the season, Jordan Love, still sitting there. Two weeks ago, I was still acquiring Jordan Love in package deals. You know, I was I was yeah. getting him not necessarily as a throw in, but something just to tip it into my direction that mm-hmm. I was looking to accept the trade. But now the Packers are bringing back, I, I believe out of retirement, quarterback coach Tom Clement. I mm. highly doubt he is coming back with the expectation that he's coaching Jordan Love. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> there has to be a belief now that maybe there's a good chance Aaron Rodgers stays, which I did not think. You know, any conversation I had, I was like, oh, God, Aaron Rodgers is out of there. The, the yeah. relationship and all the stories you hear, whether or not they're true, that's a different story. But everything you hear, he's got to be out of there. But now, w- with everything going on, I'm going to avoid Jordan Love here, but I, I love him as a uh, love. I, I love <laughs> him as a, uh, you know, p- part of the conversation here. Mm. But if, if we had more clarity around Michael Gallup, I got the jersey back here. If oh, we nice. had more clarity around Michael Gallup, I would be taking him. Mm-hmm. But I could not do it here. But I will take, really adding to my wide receiver room, Hunter Renfro, who is yeah. like, you know, you look at all these physical specimens, especially the wide receiver. You know, you see pictures of DK Metcalf and A.J. Brown with their shirts off the gym. And then you look at Hunter Renfro and you're like, this dude is yeah. not an NFL receiver. <laughs> he was fantastic. The route running yeah. ability, the way he makes defenders look silly. Give me Renfro here in what, the 10th round? Oh, I think we might even be in the 11th, the 11th round. Oh, my God. Yeah, give me Hunter Renfro in the 11th. Thank you. Yeah, you got to love that. I think there even is a picture out there of Hunter Renfro standing beside DK Metcalf. You're like, <laughs> these guys don't play the same sport, surely. Like, oh Hunter my. Renfro's, like, in the curling in the Winter Olympics, surely, and DK Metcalf's in the NFL. Like, they don't look like they play the same sport at all. But, you know what? Hunter Renfro had a better season. So, yeah, you got to love getting them here in, yeah, the 11th round. So let's get Hunter Renfro locked in. Now, one thing I want to say while the computer goes through, yeah. with both St. Brown and Renfro, the expectation is somewhere along the way in the NFL draft or via free agency, both the Raiders and the Lions look to add to the wide receiver rooms. So I, so. I, I think I think that's a little bit baked into their price based on the ADP I was able to get both of them at. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Amon Ross St. Brown, I think he will be more appropriately valued post NFL draft than the inflated mm-hmm. price we typically see in all the conversations on Twitter and uh you know different podcasts but yeah i just wanted to mention that that there is the risk that both of those teams do draft a wide receiver yeah that's really good advice i think as as we're on the board once again here we see some sort of twitter twitter darlings rashad penny and gabriel davis looking pretty good at this stage along with you know some other quarterbacks again as you did mention but i don't suppose you'll be taking cam or tyrod taylor or drew Locke at this stage I'm going to pass on them and mostly yep. because I'm stuck with a lot of Drew Locke shares from the last two Oh years. no. You, oh. you can't give them away. You can't give them away. <laughs> so at this point, looking at my tears, this is an upside pick mm-hmm. because he is a free agent. He could land somewhere. We saw a great end of season stretch. The price isn't too steep. You barely have to pay more than a penny. Do you like what I did there? Ooh. Give me Rashad Penny. The puns Excellent. are out this morning. Give me oh, Rashad okay. Penny. I like Rashad Penny at this stage as well. He's a free agent. You know, if he goes back to Seattle, that's probably the perfect place, right? But yeah, anywhere he goes, he's definitely got the talent. Hopefully he can save it. But, you know, at, at this stage in the 12th round, the 12th round, this is where, you know, you take your flyers, you take your risks. And Rashad Penny's a great value here, I think. And it, like you said, take your flyers, take the risk. It's minimal risk at this point but the upside is tremendous let's say Rashad Mm -hmm. Penny goes to you know I don't know uh, Miami and they don't draft a running back or Atlanta those are the spots everybody always talks about you're going to see an instant spike immediately so yeah yeah, to take the take the risk yeah any any running back ended up at Miami next season you're 
you have to jump up, I think, just, you know, based on the scheme that they're probably going to be running now over there. I think, yeah, running backs in Miami are going to, value is going to go through the roof. Yep. Oh, man. Okay. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. Okay. I love, this is my favorite part of drafts. See, the, the end rounds, I think I've said it on nearly every episode, this is where championships are won. The players you pick here are the ones that will win you those games by two points or the people you have to fill in, you know, on a bye week and they might just explode and, and give you those, those points that you need to take you over the line. So I always find this part, the most interesting part of, of the draft. So is anyone standing out to you here? You've got Gabriel Davis and, and Terrace Marshall and DJ Chark sitting up at the top. Um, you could add your Drew Lock collection if you really want to, but I don't think you will. Um, yeah, who's standing out to you here? Yeah, like I said, I'm going to pass on adding to the Drew Lock collection. <laughs> I will take the man with a four touchdown game on his resume, Gabriel yep. Davis. Give me, give me Gabriel Davis at this point. Yeah, you got to look to give it attached to Josh Allen. Looked amazing, you know, coming out of the last couple of games. Almost. And we're, and we're not sure what that bed. wide re- And we're not sure what that wide receiver room looks like. He might, yeah. you know, w- what's going to happen with Cole Beasley? You mm-hmm. know, I, I know Stefan Diggs is there. Emmanuel Sanders, very likely he's not going to be there. Yeah. So Gabriel Davis, you know, I, I don't want to say vacated targets because I know that that's a buzzword for a lot of people, mm. but Gabriel Davis could see an increased role because he could earn those targets. So we'll yeah, face I think, it that way. I think that that makes sense. He's definitely, you know, in a four touchdown game, but that doesn't earn you more targets, but elsewhere. So yeah, you got to like Gabriel Davis here as we lock him into our team. And as we start to head into round 14, we see someone else managed to take Drew Locke away. Uh, and Thank Zach goodness. Wilson. Thank yeah. goodness. <laughs> Irv, Smith, Irv Smith Jr. is another one I've been, I will actually try to target him last year. And then obviously he got injured almost immediately. Um, but yeah, I, I like Irv Smith Jr. I think he's, he's available at a quite cheap price at the minute still as well. And, you know, in that, in that amazing passing offense, over at the Vikings. I think Irv Smith has some sneaky value this year. And it sounds like Kirk Cousins, that the Vikings are not looking to move on from him. And now yeah. they're, you know, they're, there's talks about an extension. He wants 40 million a year, but do they give him that? I, I don't know. We'll see, but it, it does sound like the, the new regime there in Minnesota, they want to stick with Cousins. Yeah. Although I did see a photoshopped image of John Watson in purple. He looked pretty good. So that, that got me swayed a little bit, but that would be, I mean, I don't even want it yet. That's a whole other rabbit hole, but. Watson is also going to Pittsburgh. He's also still going to Miami. He's (laughs) also going to Denver, Tampa Bay. Watson is going to have 32 different uniforms. Well, 31, because he's not going to play for the Texans, but. Yeah. (laughs) That would be good if each team got to rent to Sean Watson for a week and just like pass him around and he plays for everyone else. And then, yeah, yeah, that'd be all right. He could switch teams at halftime. Everybody. (laughs) Uh. I'm assuming Jared Goff is gone. Uh, let me check. Let's have a look at quarterbacks. Uh, it doesn't look like Jared Goff. So you got most of your, you know, yeah. your backup guys there. So no, no Jared Goff. You got, yeah, Cal Trask and Gardner Minshew, Mitchell Trubisky I, sitting there. I, I know people were kind of excited. It's the people that had him on their roster, of course, but Kyle Trask, oh, he's going to get an opportunity here yeah. in Tampa. Now that Tom Brady's not there, again, I would be very surprised if Bruce Arians rolls the dice on Kyle Trask in what should be one of Bruce Arians' final seasons as a head coach in the NFL. So, yeah, I think. Do you know what scared me? I like finally say goodbye to Tom Brady in one of my leagues. I, I let him go and release him, and someone picked him up almost immediately. And that, and then it was like, oh, rumored Brady coming back. And now I'm terrified that I've just like released him. But I just don't think he's that guy, right? He'll he's retired. See, this came up in another league or another uh, in, in our Discord, actually. And somebody said, hey, am I good to drop Tom Brady? Well, in your league situation that you just mentioned, it sounds like waivers are, and free agency is still open. But yeah. in a lot of leagues, it's locked at this point, you know, waiting for mm-hmm. MFL to roll over and all that. Yeah. So especially if you can't pick anybody up, I'm not dropping Tom Brady. Not yet. And yeah. even if I can, hopefully we have at least 28 roster spots that I can stash him for a few more weeks until we get more mm-hmm. clarity. I have not dropped any of my Tom Brady. I, I haven't done it. But then again, I, <laughs> I hung on to Andrew Luck for two years. So. <laughs> for two years. 
<laughs> well, some of the leagues, like they are deep. Like there's yeah. one, I think we have 45 roster spots and oh, okay. every, uh, you, you were rostered in one of the leagues. I think, I think I saw Connor McGill rostered somewhere. Yeah. That's I how deep well it is. That year. Yeah. I got, <laughs> I got as many fantasy points as Deshaun Watson did last year. It was quite good. <laughs> I, I was going to say Andrew Luck, but yeah, same thing. Same thing. <laughs> All right. So who are we looking at here? uh oh my goodness got a bit of a mixed bag again there's a lot of a lot of you know just just risk here or some potential upside like diami brown and van jefferson i think you know i think van jefferson's a, a good player and you know he's in that la team with with matthew stafford who've already drafted and then yeah there's there's some players here that i think you want to avoid like the plague but i'll not say them just in case you end up picking what them and then i've got to go back we are is this, is at this the 15? end of the 14th end of 14th round yeah all right so based on a school the odell beckham well, injury so based on the odell beckham injury yep. and the thought that he was going to resign potentially he wanted to take a team friendly deal mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. to run it back as they're all saying in los angeles yeah and Robert Woods coming off of the ACL at the age of what, 29 or yeah. 30. Give me Van Jefferson, who's developed a nice rapport with Matthew Stafford, even though he's not having breakfast with him and Cooper Cup every morning. Give me Van Jefferson. Yeah, I like Van Jefferson. I think he really stands out yeah, compared to the other players on the board here. So, yeah, you got to love having him on your team uh, in the 14th round as we roll into round number 15. We see McCall Hardman and Gronk coming off the board, whether he plays or not next year, I think is entirely up to if Tom Brady plays or not next year, which is probably no. I don't know. Gronk did say he would have interest in playing with Joe Burrow. Ooh, that so, is a very interesting. Again, take that yeah. with a grain of salt. Who, who knows? But all right. Adam Troutman, Mike Davis, Robert Tunyon, J.D. McKissick. Johnny Smith, Gus Edwards, Callaway, Ernst Palmer. I know a lot of people are excited for Josh Palmer. Mm-hmm. I think Mike Williams, Mike Williams is one of those players. I think he's going to be back in Los Angeles next year. I think he I gets think, extended. Yeah. I think so. He, and, he's, yeah. Uh, so no Palmer. Can you scroll down just a little bit? Of course. Bit? Yeah. Evan Ingram's a free agent, right? He. Yeah, I, I was looking at I don't him. know why I still believe in Evan Ingram, but. I do, I do too. I just can't help it. He's. I, I'm thinking, is it just the Giants or just a dumpster fire? And if he goes somewhere else, he looks like he did his first year. And the I athletic profile, the athletic profile is there. You talk yeah. about guys like Kyle Pitts, Evan Ingram, uh, uh, Noah Fant, TJ Hawkinson. Mm-hmm. Evan Ingram is athletic. He just can't yeah. stay healthy and at times can't catch the ball, which is an issue for a receiving tight end. Who, yeah, that's he can't get blocked. He can't block. Yeah. Give me, yeah, give me Evan Engram, even though oh, it's not tight end. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take him. I especially, I think I only have Kyle Pitts at tight end. I think you might be not right. Let's necessary. track. Yeah, only Kyle Pitts. So yeah, Evan Engram will be your second tight end, which you know isn't isn't horrible. Yeah, give me Evan Engram at this point. All right, let's lock in Evan Engram, and you know, hope he goes. I think he is a he is a free agent this year, correct? He is. Yep. Yeah, so you know he's going to land. I, I would be surprised if he ends up back in, back in New York. So I think he'll land somewhere that is, you know, going to use him as as that pass catching tight end, and hopefully use him to good effect. But it goes back to the same thing we talked about with all these impending free agents. If he gets even a decent landing spot, you don't mm-hmm. need him to take the field to cash out. No. So it, it's something that you know I'm, I'm, you and I clearly are both keeping an eye on. Absolutely. Oh, God, look at these names. I'm at, you know what, Amari Rogers, if you're listening to this podcast, I don't like it very much because I took so many of you. I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> and you've just done absolutely, you, absolutely nothing. Because again, we talked about it earlier. Everyone gets excited. Green Bay, well, they've drafted a wide receiver. Uh, and, right. Well, he's done nothing. I was so excited. And yeah, I think the hype got the best of me. Not even the hype, just the landing spot got the best of me. I'm going to go with, it's not necessarily, you wouldn't call it an upside pick based on the possibility of gaining longer term value, Mm -hmm. but we saw what he was able to do and he was productive, maybe not efficient, but productive 
mm-hmm. in Detroit when DeAndre Swift went down. Give me Jamal, Jamal Williams yeah. with the thought that, you know, we'll see what happens there with that backfield. Yeah, I like Jamal Williams. He's a good player. Looked really solid when he was sort of sharing touches. And yeah, the, the talent is is certainly there with, with Jamal Williams. So yeah, I think that's a nice pick coming into the late 16th round. As we head into the 17th round, your penultimate pick of the draft as we get to see people like David Johnson, Gardner Minshew, and T.Y. Hilton sitting up at the top of the draft. Antonio Brown down there if you're feeling really, really, really risky. You know why is Keyshawn Vaughn gone? Oh, I don't know, actually. Let's see. No, Keyshawn Vaughn is still there. I think he's the the only contracted running back in Tampa Bay, right? Give me Keyshawn Vaughn. He is the only one left. I, anybody that's listening to this that knows me knows that I was up on my soapbox screaming, you know, Keyshawn Vaughn, no matter what. Keyshawn Vaughn, no matter and he, oh my God, I hate him so much, but give me Keyshawn in the 18th round. Uh, you know what? Whenever I did this mock draft as well, episode one, I took Keyshawn Vaughn in the 18th round as well. So you're, you're in good company here. I think, you know, <laughs> this is, this is, this is his time. So let's get Keyshawn Vaughn locked up as we head into our final pick. Dearness Johnson coming off the board. Very good player. If you can get a role. I like, I actually, I like Jarrett Patterson there in the 17th mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're talking about McKissick possibly coming back to Washington. He's a mm. free agent. They're also talking about maybe adding another running back, but if they don't, Jarrett Patterson could be involved if anything were to happen to Antonio Gibson. So I like him in the 17th. Yeah. He's got a nose for the end zone as well. Jared Patterson He's quite good in those, those situations. So he could end up in one of those years that are running back just for whatever reason, just gets like that Lagarde Blum kind of year where he just gets so many touchdowns that it just the points, you know, accumulate that way. All right, let's see. Our final pick of the draft as you got people like Coleman and Alan Lazard at the top. Donovan Peoples-Jones still hanging about there. And, you know, Marcus Mariota, who's one of the many quarterbacks rumored to be going to Pittsburgh, is still sitting there as well. Yeah, I like, uh, at this point in the draft, especially non-tight end premium, Mm -hmm. I'm usually swinging for quarterbacks or running backs. Yeah, I, they have the the most potential upside and um, potential shifts in value. Now, Daryl Williams and JD <laughs> McKissick, or not JD McKissick? I'm sorry, uh, uh, Jarek McKinnon. Yes, are two intriguing options because can Clyde Edwards Alaire stay healthy? And both mm-hmm. were utilized in Kansas City. I'm going to... Give me, give me Daryl Williams. I, I could, I could see him coming yeah, back. Yeah, Daryl Williams. Yeah, I think so. He's still there. I think Andy Reid was even quoted saying, you know, we really like Daryl. Like he knows our system really well. He's been with us for a few years. I don't see why he he wouldn't come back, especially with how, how good he looked as well. So. Yeah, I think he, Darrell Williams is a good pick. He's somebody, in addition to Jamal Williams, that you're in the middle of the season, you have a Swift or you have a Clyde edwards alaire and they go down, and you're looking to fill your running back room. If you're a contender, that's somebody that could get you 10, 12, 15 points maybe on occasion. Yeah. But if you're not a contender, people get hungry for those points. I think you could maybe package up a Daryl Williams or a Jamal Williams with a third just for a bump yeah. up to the second. And those, yeah. those are, you know, playing those small margins. Those are winning moves. So yeah, give me Daryl Williams or, Darryl or Williams. he, Ooh. or he's not in the NFL once we hit the 2022 season and all of this is for nothing, but yeah, Mr. Yeah. Williams, Mr. Williams. So that's like about as our final pick of the draft as Dwayne Eskridge and who was the last person? Who was the last guy that was drafted here? Let's see. Dwayne Eskridge, second last guy picked. Aust- poor Austin Hooper. Austin oh, Hooper. I have a lot final. of Austin Hooper too. Yeah. <laughs> He's the last guy off the board. As Let's sort of switch and let's see by position who you've ended up with here. This looks like an absolutely brilliant team. So a quarterback, Justin Herbert, 
Matthew Stafford, Deshaun Watson, and Kirk Cousins. What a great start. Running back, Travis Etienne, Rashad Penny, Jamal Williams, Keyshawn Vaughn, and Daryl Williams. We've got a couple of wide receivers. We've got Amari Cooper, team underrated, right? Amari Cooper, Brandon Ayuk, Brandon Cooks, Hunter Renfro in there. And then we've got Amon Ross St. Brown, Gabe Davis, and Van Jefferson to, to end off the wide receiver core. And then two tight ends, we've got Cal Pitts, who hopefully won't turn into our second tight end, Evan Ingram. What an amazing team. Now, there are some gaps there at the running back position. We need some things to happen. But I do have those pieces that I can leverage in Deshaun Watson, uh, you know, uh, Justin Herbert as well. Matthew Stafford typically don't get the market value in terms of being able to yeah. move him for what you need. Same with Kirk Cousins. And the proof is in the pudding there at 810, getting Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Uh, Rashad Penny, upside piece, Jamal Williams, Daryl Williams, Keyshawn Vaughn. We'll see what happens. Expectations are low, but that's 16th, 17th, and 18th round pick. And this wide receiver core, it's actually how a lot of my wide receiver cores are built. It's those mm. guys that are valued as low-end wide receiver twos, high-end wide receiver threes, but on any given week could go off and give you that wide receiver one production. And then solidifying my tight end room, especially in non-premium, getting Kyle Pitts, the dynasty tight end one. I don't have to worry about that, but again, yeah, maybe I look to pivot down to a Goddard or a Hawkinson. If I can get something substantial added again, looking at the draft, the fact I took Kyle Pitts in the second and Mark Andrews is in the fifth. I will be kicking myself all weekend. Yeah. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. You, you still got to be pretty happy with, with getting Kyle Pitts regardless. And yeah, what what a brilliant team that you've you've managed to build here. So you know, as we as we finish off our hot seat mock draft, your seat's cooling down a bit, Johnny. Feel a bit more relaxed, a bit more comfortable. I am, I am. As soon as this is over, though, I'm gonna actually get another cup of coffee and then work on uh, some of my my tears and behind the scenes things with our upcoming 2022 projections. So it's gonna be a busy weekend, regardless. Oh, I can't wait. So, John, thank you so much for coming on. Remember, you can find John over at the Dynasty Theory uh, Fantasy Football Podcast and at the Bauer Club. And remember, don't forget, there's only one rule about Bauer Club. And let's talk as much as possible about Bauer Club. Let's make sure that we give him a like, give him a follow and see all the great stuff that he's got going over online. So John, one final time, thank you so much for coming on. And as the embers cool down from the hot seat, just remember that even though we're cooling off for one week, you and your team should always stay lit. See you next week. Thanks, Connor.